guys, MN Millennial Farmer here. Uh, I'm out here today and what I'm doing is I am deep banding nutrients below the soil. So it's phosphorus and potassium that I'm putting on. Um, there's a little bit of zinc in there. But this is the machine I was really excited to uh, teach you guys about or show you guys here. So I am driving right now using GPS and this system here with sub-inch accuracy. <clears throat> so I'm applying my phosphorus and potassium that our corn next year will need. I'm applying that within one inch of accuracy and I'm going to come here in the spring uh, six months from now and I'll plant right over the top of this with the corn planter. And I'll plant right over the top of these, these fertilizer bands. So every 30 inches there's a shank on the chisel plow that is applying phosphorus and potassium. And not only is it just uh, straight applying those nutrients, but it's doing it with a variable rate. And I'll show you guys the rake here when we turn. There you can see the fertilizer cart behind the chisel plow. So it's got two tanks. There's potassium in the front and uh, phosphorus in the back. And uh, one of the benefits also to doing this is that we're applying the fertilizer below the ground. So. We're putting it down deep, we're trying to get it four to six inches below the ground and try to get it in there deeper where it's going to bind to the soil and it's going to cling to the soil rather than having it on top where uh, snow or rainwater can, can uh, erode it away and wash the soil away. We don't want our fertilizer to leave the field. We want our fertilizer in the field as much or more as everybody else does. So by putting it four to six inches under the ground it allows us to do a couple of things Number one, that fertilizer is going to get in the soil, it's going to cling tight to the soil because the fertilizer has a positive charge, the soil has a negative charge. So they're actually attracted to each other. And what that's going to do is make that fertilizer stick in that soil so it's not going to run off, it's going to be stuck there. Um, the other thing it does is it makes it more efficient for the corn to use. So when the corn roots go down, and they find one of these fertilizer bands, they'll send more roots that direction and the corn can actually use it more efficiently. Therefore, we're not, we don't have to put as much on to support the crop that we're gonna grow here next year because we've got that, that straight band that, that the, the crop is gonna be able to use. Um, and as far as the variable rate part of it, I'll show you this here. So the solid blue is, is where I've applied already and I'm applying it in strips like this because it kind of, it, it does a better job of pulling the, the chisel plow straight. So when you go in strips, it doesn't want to pull as sideways. It doesn't want to pull one direction. So I do it in strips. And the straight blue is where I've applied it already. You can kind of see the different colors behind it is the different amounts that we're putting on. So in these big areas here, we're not applying any phosphorus to these spots here. Um, the other colors all vary. Here's my other page. This is my target ranges for the weight of the product I'm putting on. This is what we're actually applying. Those will change as we go across the field. <clears throat> There's a little clutch back there on the cart, kind of in front of that little handle. There's clutches there that control, as you go across different parts of the field, those clutches will control the varying rates of, of the product that we're putting on. There's a tile riser there. That's a subject for another day. Hopefully I'll make a video about that shortly here and uh, kind of give, give you guys my opinion on uh, tile and why we do it and how it's actually really beneficial for the environment and for the farmers. Um, and the variable rate side of this, um, how we get those variable rates and how do we decide how much to put on. We go around and we take 10 or 12 samples on every two and a half acres. So we do what's called a two and a half acre grid sampling. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a cold here. So every two and a half acres, we we get an average of how many of each different nutrient we have in the soil on that two and a half acres. And so we can write our maps, our prescriptions we call them, to put on varying levels of phosphorus and potassium. That way, um, on the grids that need large amounts of fertilizer, we can put large amounts of fertilizer. On the grids that don't need large amounts of fertilizer, we're not over applying and putting on more than we need. This is obviously beneficial for, uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, we're not putting any nitrogen on with this machine right now. 
but um, they're, they're, we can put it on with this machine. We're not doing it now because uh, it's kind of early. Um, we don't want to put end in the ground yet until it's pretty cold out um, because we don't want to lose that end to leaching. We don't want it to leach out with the groundwater. That's never a good thing, you guys know that. Um, and obviously we don't want that for, for several reasons. So we're not putting any nitrogen down right now with this, just a little bit that's mixed in with our phosphorus. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll jump out there and uh, show you guys what the cart's all about and how it works. All right, I'm gonna step out here real quick and kind of go through some of this with you guys. Hopefully you can hear me in the wind. Usually it seems like you can. So here's the cart that we put the fertilizer in. And um, these big yellow bins, are just full of fertilizer inside there. So it does nothing but sit in there. There's a big fan on the back, that silver thing there, and that fan <clears throat> forces air into those bins so that they're pressurized when that fan is on. I've got it turned off now because it's kind of a high-pitched, whiny, squealy sound that you guys don't need to listen to. Um, <clears throat> here's the clutches here. <clears throat> this is what controls how far open the valves are in here, which goes into this meter roll, which spins here drops it into these tubes and the fan system again blows it through these tubes so it's up in here falls down here into these tubes and it gets blown forward up to the chisel plow <clears throat> and these tubes go every which way here we do have the ability to put on nitrogen with this as well but we're not doing it right now um, but the tubes will come come around here and they go to every other shank. This is a regular shank here with nothing on it. All that does is till the soil. But um, up here, you can see there's a tube going to this shank. And the fertilizer comes through here. And it gets blown out right behind the, the sweep or the point right here. And the fertilizer falls in the furrow right behind, right behind this sweep. And I'm lucky to have a helper with me today for a while my little helper Isla. Are you having fun in the tractor? Now we're having fun because we found the cookies. of extra things here um, I've got the maps right here and these maps <clears throat> these maps are not on the computer now so it's a little bit easier to see um, this is our uh, our phosphorus map these white areas here are uh, no phosphorus going on so those are areas where we won't apply anything got to get around a rock here So in those areas, we won't apply any phosphorus to these areas. We'll still be applying our uh, potassium, but there is areas here you can see where we won't be putting on potassium. These green areas are a high potassium or a high potash area. And these are a high phosphorus area. So this is just a little bit of an easier map to see so that you can see the variable rates. You can see the two and a half acre grids that, uh, that we're using. You can see the variability throughout the field a little bit better. I also wanted to show you uh, our auto steer system here. You know, obviously I'm applying with sub-inch accuracy. Well, I'm not steering the tractor to do that. I'm, I'm good, but I'm not that good. Um, this here, this system here, this, this line here uh, is every 30 feet because I'm pulling a 30-foot chisel plow. Every 30 feet, this line will track us over. 
um, and it's it's perfectly accurate so when I turn on the ends all I do is hit this button here and uh, this tractor will take off and steer from one end to the other all day long without me touching it I've just got to turn on the ends that's what allows us to be able to to leave these swaths like this so that I can come back several hours later and uh, follow in my same track um, thanks for watching uh, I appreciate it a lot. For those of you who are not following me on Facebook or Instagram, you certainly should be, and vice versa. For those of you who uh, aren't followers on YouTube, shame on you. So thanks everybody for watching, and uh, I hope to be making a, a few more videos like, kind of like this. Um, I want to talk about tiling. I also want to talk about uh, nitrogen. That's a big one. I know uh, that's a big concern for a lot of people, for everybody. And uh, there's some really cool stuff coming coming through as far as technology that is going to allow us to use a lot of different variable rate nitrogen and different things like that so that we can put on only the amount of nitrogen that we need. Um, there's also some products uh, starting to be used now that allow us to put nitrogen down and, and keep, it in a, keep it in a stable form longer so that uh, it's not going to leach out and get into the groundwater. So there's a lot of things like that that I want to do some some of these on and uh, keep watching. I'm going to try to come out with some, uh, some more videos. I appreciate it and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Is that a good cookie, Isla? It looks like it. No, no thanks. That's for you. That's all for you.